um, school board meeting, business meeting. Um, we all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you all for attending, and um, do I have any adjustments to the agenda this evening? Just one. No, I do. <laughs> uh, I'm going to recommend that we postpone item F to the next okay. board meeting. Great. Um, next item number two is approval of school board min minutes um, from our business meeting Tuesday, September 13th. Do I have a motion? Yeah. Uh, I move that we approve the um, minutes for the, two for the September 13th. Okay. Thanks. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. I'm glad to vote. Um, any discussion, changes? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Um, special business meeting Thursday, September 22nd. Do I have a motion, please? Do I have these minutes? Kate? I move to approve the special business meeting uh, minutes of Thursday, September 22nd. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? That was a, our brief meeting to approve um, the cross country trip for those who weren't there. Um, we, we just oh. had a quorum at that point. I was wondering why I couldn't find the minutes. Yep, that's the why. Vote. Yeah. Okay. Um, all those Great in minutes. favor? Okay, seven zero. Okay. Um, let's move on to our comments by student representatives. Um, I'm not sure who we have this evening. I think we're going to start with our fourth graders from Mr. Nielsen's class. All right. Hi, I'm Julia Thorak. Hi, I'm Sam Whitney. We are fourth graders in Mr. Nielsen's class. We have a unique way to communicate with parents about what's happening in our classroom. Instead of sending home a newsletter, we make a weekly news video. It starts five or more, more students from each week. In our awesome news video, we talk about what we've learned during the <coughs> Each student talks about one subject and stands in front of a video camera and reads from an index card. Mr. Nielsen runs, a cam runs the camera and holds an index car card. Behind us is a large piece of green fabric, which, al which allows Mr. Nielsen to put a photo of some place in Maine behind, a behind us dur during the editing pro process. So it looks like we are really at that location. Sometimes we put sounds like seagulls or waves in the background. Since we study Maine social studies, the first person who reads the news has the introduction. This student tells the parents where we're broadcasting from and tells a little bit about the location. In the, in the news video you're about to see, we're broadcasting from Spring Point Light in South Portland. We hope you enjoy the newscast. That's enough. Hi, I'm Nick. This week we're broadcasting from Spring Point Light in South Portland. It was built in 1897. The 90 900 foot break water that leads out to it was built in 1951. It marks the ledge there. Hi, I'm Elena, and spelling this week, we studied words that have a long E sound and the ways to spell them. 
We also continued practicing our cursive. Hi, I'm Connor. Did you know that the first Mainers are called Paleo Indians? They came here about 10,000 years ago. They hunted the woolly mammoth and caribou. They used stone weapons and tools. Hi, I'm Amanda. Mrs. Gallagher, our school counselor, came in to help us create an identity poster about who we are, what we like, what what we like to do, what makes us unique. Hi, I'm Karina. In our reader's workshop, we learned about side po posts to help us understand nonfiction. These include photos, maps, captions, titles, and both old face print. We practice looking for side po posts in so social studies. Hi, I'm Sam. This week in our writer's workshop, we've been having conferences with Mr. Nielsen and other students. We're hoping to get ideas on how we can improve our true stories. We have penpals from Lebanon, Maine, <coughs> Maine. The, edit, the edited final drafts are due Tuesday, October 11th. Hi, I'm Piper. Our class earned 30 stars and chose to watch a movie. To earn 30 stars, we have to work hard and cooperate with each other and our teachers. We also pass the put-up animal when we see and hear positive things. Hi, I'm Helen. In math this week, we measured our head sizes to figure out the minimum, maximum range, mode, and medium head sizes. For the record, the median head size in our class is 54 centimeters. We always reviewed adding and subtracting larger numbers. Hi, I'm Christina. In science, we went outside to learn about where the sun is, how it heats in an atmosphere, and how a shadow changes position during the day. Hi, I'm Julia. Two students from our class will be speaking to the school board next Tuesday, October 11th at 7 p.m. They'll be talking about how we use awesome news videos to communicate to all of you at home. It'll be on cable channel 3. surprised me one day by when I came into my classroom, there was that thing around my whiteboard, so I took a picture of it. <laughs> it came in handy. So if you have any questions, these two are ready for you, if, if that's something you want to do. Any questions from board or student reps? I have a question for you. Um, how do you get to be the person in front of the green screen? Mr. Nielsen has a chart, and he'll cross out the people for each week that go. Nice. Thank you. I have a question. The things that you read, do you write? That the I can tell people are reading off of um, cue cards. Do, you, do the students write those themselves? Um, no, Mr. Nielsen writes. He helps write. We hope to, as the year progresses, we hope to get to a point where the kids can take some time. Um, they could easily do as good a job as I could. Yeah. Just right now, for experience. Still early. Right. Um, I'm doing it, but they could easily do it, and they will do it as, as, in a little while. Yeah, that's great. It's wonderful. Any other comments, questions? Uh, just one question. Do you all have someone at home taping this for you? On I know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you? Well, your parents are here. <laughs> yes. I would just nice say thank you for, for demonstrating for us one of the ways that the technology can enhance learning in the classroom. Yeah. The, uh, the, actually, a lot of the, the green screen part came from Ruth's Recycling. 
Really? And, and giant bolts of green fabric, which happened to be exactly the right color. Mm -hmm. And um, it's called chroma key green. And actually, you would pay a fair amount of money for it if you went out to buy it. And I Ruth didn't know the gold mine she had, so I actually took all of it. <laughs> and she said, take as much as you want. So I did. Can we sell and, it? Uh, <laughs> so, we have a budget shortfall. <laughs> no, you know, green screen, I've got it. Very right, nice. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Do we have middle school students? Steve, do we have anyone from the middle school? Oh, we have Roman. Awesome. Hi, my name is Hannah Bosworth, and I will be representing the Cape of Elizabeth Middle School Student Council. And so, um, for my half of this presentation, I was told to hit a few points, and I'll just talk about those. The first point would be novels and about kids in our school reading. And this trimester, this year, the teachers really wanted us to make a self-selection so that we could really like enjoy what we're reading and actually have a good time and understand it better. And our second point would be Cornell Notes. This year we're starting this new thing and it's like everyone in the whole school does the same format of note taking. So I think it's a lot easier to understand because I don't know, you don't have to go from teacher to teacher doing different styles. And so it's basically two columns, and on one column there's either the word or the equation or the property or whatever subject you have. And then on the other column, it's the definition. And so the third point would be the dances. The dan our very first dance is on Thursday, October 7th, and the theme is Harry Potter. And our fourth point would be that on October 27th, is a half day, which is the same day as a dance. And the 28th, there's no school, and those are both due to conferences. And talking about conferences, that's our fifth point. And stu they're very student involved. And we want the kids to go to them and really explain like, what their goals are, and what their strengths are, and what their weaknesses, etc. And so those are very kid led. And that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. My name is Roman Medina and I am the president of student council this year. I will be reporting on the updates from the middle school about kneecaps, reading, laptops, and sports. First, last week the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders started the kneecap testing, which involves two areas, reading and math. In addition, 5th and 8th graders will also be tested in writing. During this testing season, the school has had the great idea to provide the students with a healthy breakfast from 8.20 to 8.35. The menu varies, for example, scrambled eggs or breakfast burritos, with a side of muffins or milk or orange juice. Furthermore, prior to taking the test, students are allowed to go out to take some fresh air or relax. This year, 8th graders will be reading as a class novel to kill a mockingbird by Harper Lee. Also, last week, laptops started going home and to my knowledge, the process has been going smoothly so far. Finally, regarding the sports, in the winter, we, re we offer 7th and 8th grade boys and girls basketball, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade indoor track, and 6th, 7th, and 8th grade swimming. And in the fall, we had 216 kids participate. Thank you. Thank you, Roman and Kate. Any questions for our middle school? Thanks for serving on your student council. Thank you. Okay, um, we will hear from our high school reps now about what's going on in the high school. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, there are quite a few things happening in high school, actually. Um, we recently had math meet. Um, we also recently had spirit week. Teachers are going through iPad training, so every teacher now has an iPad and can do lots of really interesting things on them. So kids will be getting them soon. Um, we also have sports playoffs starting very soon, so that will be interesting to watch. Um, we have the PSATs for a lot of the underclassmen coming up, as well as teacher conferences. Um, and the outing club also 
implemented a new recycling center in the um, cafeteria, which has composting and recycling and trash, and it's all set up really neatly with displays of where to put what thing, and it's running really, really well. So we're really happy with that. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Abby Donnelly, and um, as Sasha mentioned, we recently had Spirit Week at the high school, which included a series of after-school activities, like we had a bonfire and sports games with different student section themes. Um, we had hallway decorating, which the juniors won, and um, each day, we had a different theme of what to dress up as. We had Twin Day, which was interesting. There were crayons and people in super fan suits. <laughs> and um, on the final day of Spirit Week, we had an assembly, which included activities like, what did we have? We had a longboard race. We had dodgeball, um, cake eating. That was a, <laughs> that's always a crowd favorite. Um, so yeah, that was really fun. Uh, the students really enjoyed that. And next Friday, I believe, we have our big game against Mountain Valley, which they are our rivals. And I believe that Sam and Noah, who are the leaders at the Superfan Club, have um, organized a tailgate, which I hear is going to be the best one yet. And also, Mock Trial has their first scrimmage against Deering on October 31st. And, yeah, that's it. Okay, any questions for our high school representatives? That all sounds good, thanks. Okay. All right, moving on to item number four, comments from the public on agenda items. We'll allow our young students to go home. Thank you for coming out. Yes, thank you for coming. I'd like to remind the public that items can be brought to either Meredith or myself um, for consideration to be placed on the board agenda um, at um, any point a week prior to our next <coughs> board meeting. So um, if you have something that you would like to bring before the board, just come to um, Meredith or myself. Um, num item number five is recognition for a very special board member who will be leaving us um, this evening. This will be her last board meeting. Um, our own Kathy Ray, who's going to blush throughout this whole presentation, <laughs> I know. She started about five minutes ago, I think. <laughs> Kathy is good at a lot of things, but taking compliments is not one of her better suits. She's one of the more humble people I know, so. Um, <laughs> can anyone fan her? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I get the sense she'll need it. I would like to... Um, I think a few of us would like to recognize Kathy, but um, Alan Hawkins is here in the back, um, our former superintendent, and I think he's prepared a few things to say. And so um, we will wait for Alan. And um, I think he'd be more comfortable if it were a roast. <laughs> <I'm already roasted. laughs> Good evening. I am Alan Hawkins, the former superintendent of schools in Cape Elizabeth. I also live in South Portland, in case anyone wonders if I live in Cape Elizabeth or not. During the period from 2005 to 2010, I learned an extremely important lesson. As a superintendent of schools in Cape Elizabeth, one fact became very clear to me. That is that you, Kathy Ray, are truly a thoughtful, caring person. As a member of the Cape Elizabeth School Board, you consistently kept your focus on the education of the young people in Cape Elizabeth. You managed that by being, first, a careful observer. Secondly, a careful listener. Third, <coughs> a quality questioner. Fourthly, a mentor for other members of the school board. You're a deep thinker, an economic leader, 
and a strong representative of all the citizens of the town of Cape Elizabeth. Your background in business and your clear understanding of the qualities of an insightful and vibrant leader in the corporate world brought the same gift to the school system. I must more specifically tell you that as a superintendent of schools, I saw and continue to see you as a true treasure to Cape Elizabeth. When we each take the responsibility of preparing young people for the future, we must immediately recognize that there are many challenges in that process. Quality education is not free. It is guided by the effective classroom management, clear, concise instruction, effective, dedicated school leadership, management of the real expenses of education, not the perception of the reality, solid future planning, effective review of curriculum, instruction, and assessment, careful and thoughtful management, appropriate, successful educational support services, and trust that are keys to all that we do. In order to plan for the broad range of educational opportunities within the schools, the members of the school board and the superintendent of schools must work together. We must ask each other the difficult questions, seek the solid middle ground, and make appropriate decisions together, all with a clear understanding that each decision is a prime factor in both the teaching and the learning that occurs in our schools. During my first five years in Cape Elizabeth, my work with the school board was challenging, difficult, and exhilarating because we were able to find common ground. Your leadership, Kathy, both as the assistant chair and as two years as the chair of the board, was extremely important. Quality work together was, in the long run, tantamount to a strong school system. Your work with the administration, administrative team was both rewarding and exciting. Future planning combined with setting and meeting common goals was the key element in moving forward. Mutual trust was, and is, as I said before, extremely important. We both know that when that trust is lost, the work of the board can be compromised and impede forward movement. It is important for me to express my sincere thanks for all your work, Kathy, during my time as superintendent. Your support was, as noted before, a true treasure. Thank you for being a professional, an insightful leader, and a friend. You will always hold a very special place in my heart. Your strong support publicly in August and again in December of 2010 will always be an integral part of my life story. The strong leadership over the eight-year period of the Cape Elizabeth School Board will now become an impo as important the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Although the election has not been held yet, <laughs> we know that you are uh, running unopposed. Citizens of Cape Elizabeth should each stop and recognize your true dedication to students, to education, and to a way of life for all citizens of Cape Elizabeth. My sincere special thanks for your work as a leader. My sincere best wishes to you and your next steps on the, on the town council. And your gifts to the town of Cape Elizabeth will continue to bring honor and strong support to this community. Thank you for everything you do. Unlike Dr. Hawkins, I haven't known Kathy for quite as long, um, but I did ask our district administrators for some comments about Kathy, so I thought I'd just share a few of those. Um, Kathy has my utmost respect as a board member, parent, and citizen. citizen. Professionalism, she brought a historical perspective to the board. She was able to separate issues from her own thoughts and feelings. She was a leader in policy. She helped the district complete its cycle of job descriptions. Uh, she rode the bus. Janet, I'm not sure if you can recall exactly how many times, but several thousand, I believe, uh, on bus appeals decisions. And um, as Kate and I can testify, 
<laughs> that, that is a special gift. Yes. <laughs> Those roads can be a little bumpy at times. Um, Kathy spoke out against parking fees, which I'm sure Kate remembers particularly well. <laughs> she was instrumental in drawing lines for community services. Kathy has been supportive. Kathy always did the right thing, even when it wasn't the popular thing, which I think is you know, something that all of us look for in our own lives. Um, personally, I appreciate um, it, Kathy's outreach and support of me as a new superintendent. She has been um, available and forthcoming and <laughs> um, a, a good ear and a resource to me, and I look forward to continuing that relationship with her as she joins the town council, so thank you. Thanks, Meredith. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have a board gift for you, um, or a gift from the district, um, but because you've already received a print, we had to put our heads together and come up with something else, and we'll get that to you. Um, It'll be a surprise later in the month. So, <laughs> Thank you. Surprise. Um, I would like to say a few words to you, Kathy. Um, and I'm pleased that Alan made it tonight because I've only had the opportunity to work with you for three years. Um, so I'm not as qualified to speak about the specifics of your eight years of service. Um, as I've mentioned before, um, we're a very young board in terms of service. Um, and when you leave, um, we will not have a member who served more than three years. As such, we've leaned pretty heavily on you um, in terms of relying on your institutional memory, particularly in the last year. And your experience has been invaluable, not only in helping guide us, but in really rooting us in history and um, things that are important to this district. Uh, as a member of this board, I think you're the quintessential team player. You have all the qualities of a really good team player. Uh, as a good team player, you understand the rules. And it's not just district policy. You're first to remind us um, that on our own, um, we have no power. And that all decisions of the board have to be um, board decisions as a whole, despite our individual desires. And that's something that will always resonate with me. Um, that you've taught us and, and drilled into us. Um, over the last year, that's really helped us move away from the minutia and focus in on what's important to best serving the needs of this district and all the stakeholders. So I appreciate that, and I'm sorry that it took us this long to get rid of all those committees that you told us to get rid of. <laughs> Um, as a good team player, Kathy, you've always been reliable. Um, if you say you're going to do something, I can always count on you. And um, when you were called upon this year to chair several committees and serve as the lead negotiator for the teacher contract or show up for multiple Saturday meetings, you were always there. And you're steadfast in your commitment to the district and to um, your commitment um, to the community as a whole. Um, finally, and most importantly, I think the thing that I appreciate about you and will remember about you um, as a team player is that you are, ultimately, you are such a fair person, Kathy. Um, and as anyone can expect on a team of seven, I know we haven't always agreed, um, all of us, in which direction to head. And I think you have provided um, a pristine example of how to disagree without being disagreeable. Uh, as such, I think your opinions have held great sway with the board. Um, whether your point of view has been adopted or not, you've always had the ability to go, go forward without umbrage or ego. Um, and that can't be said very often now in politics. Um, because as I said earlier, I think you understand and model. Um, you not only understand it, but you model that you're one of seven. And that's been a tremendous gift to this board um, and to me. So I appreciate that. Um, as I watch the evening news and I, I see the divisiveness that surrounds us in politics, I wish that we could bottle some of your ability to be simple, or not simple, to be um, civic and le level-headed and um, 
And uh, I would send those cases down to Capitol Hill because I could think of a few people who could use a lot of that medicine. So um, in closing, I'd like to say I feel very privileged to have had the honor to serve with you, Kathy. And I thank you for um, all that you've done for me and for this board in leading us and guiding us. Um, and I'm thrilled to see that you will continue your service to this community because the world needs more leaders like you. And I appreciate, um, I appreciate that you're willing to continue on at a different level. So um, best of luck and we'll stay in touch. Any other comments or? <laughs> I know. Should we take a fanning break? Could I say something? Um, I think John had something to say. For well, me. you got to tell me that before you just look and say, can anybody speak? He just <laughs> looked at me and said, I would like to right, say I'll something. Speak quickly. Um, Crisply. Kathy, I just want to uh, offer a very, just a personal uh, thank you. Um, it's very humbling to be, become a member of, 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 of the district um, leadership team. Um, and, find yourself as a, as a member of the school board and among the, le the leadership of, of, of the educational system in the town. And um, it's, it's um, as a new board member, at least for me, it was, it was tremendously overwhelming. There's a, there's a lot of information and a lot of material to, to master and, um, and you feel like you need to do it in, a, in, a, in, in, in short order. And, and Kathy called me um, early in my service and, and offered her, her mentorship um, offered her to be there to provide advice, um, to provide guidance if, if I was interested, never offered to force any guidance. In fact, was very clear about, um, about uh, um, being very respectful in terms of um, allowing people to develop their own opinions, um, at the same time uh, being a forceful advocate um, for her own uh, opinions. and, and um, I want to just thank you for, for taking that extra time to provide that mentorship. Um, I, I've found your, your um, thoughtfulness and care and commitment to the district to be um, exemplary, and, and I've always looked to you to, to, um, to help guide my thinking um, in all of the, the big decisions that we've made. So thank you very much, and I, I've appreciated and enjoyed very much working with you. Thank you, John. David? Um, I, I will try to be crisp. Uh, I, I've served with Kathy for two years, and it's been a tumultuous two years. We've had a lot of difficult issues. And I can say, and I think Kathy would agree, that she and I have been on the opposite side of some issues and on the same side of some issues. And I have grown to appreciate the, I didn't know it, the volume had to be turned up on me, but um, I grown to, have grown to appreciate the fact that um, there is a big difference between being an advocate as a lawyer and being a member of a school board. And I think you taught that to me, Kathy, uh, and I appreciate it. I know that um, whenever we had discussions, I felt it was respectful, and you clearly were respectful. And by this year, either I have grown, I don't think you shrunk, so I must have grown. And I find we agree with each other quite a bit, and I think that's in large part to um, uh, the approach you've taken and everything I've really said in terms of your ability to deal with issues and not person, personalities. And uh, um, I sincerely enjoyed working with you for two years. And I regret that you're leaving this board, but I'm glad to see you going on, on the other board. Council, excuse me. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kim. Go ahead. Yes. Sorry. I'll be really brief. Um, well, although I've served the shortest on this term with Mike as well, um, I can happily and proudly say I've known Kathy the longest. <laughs> and, and Alan, too. And so we've gone back from Bluebirds to Campfire Girls to Battery Theaters at Murphy Mason and now the school board. And I can honestly say I've learned so much just by sitting and listening to Kathy, uh, whether it's in the, the policy meetings or more so during uh, the school board meetings and also the many, many meetings that we had 
this past year when we were going through all of the superintendent searches and the other searches as well. So, um, Kathy, I just want to wish you the best of luck. I was thinking about you before I came here today, and I thought, I, I'm just so happy that she, you know, she's, I'm sad that she's leaving the school board. It's just so great, though, that she's making this move to the town council, because I couldn't think of a better candidate, and so I'm so happy nobody's running against you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so good luck and congratulations. Um, Kathy, um, I think as you know, I don't know how many times I've called you and we've had uh, met in Portland um, and you've offered your mentorship and help. Um, I think you have the strong, silent ability to get things done and to <clears throat> see the big picture and to um, communicate the big picture when things become very passionate. and. Um, I've admired that and have learned from you and will try to, um, I've taken some of your, uh, what I admire from you and try to hold on to it as I sit up here and um, as we go forward. Um, I'm thrilled that you're on the town council and can only, um, it's just another piece of who you are as a person that you dedicated to this town and the community and it's not about sitting and having a microphone in front of you, but it's really the, um, the love for the whole town. And um, I just so admire that, so thank you. I think the, uh, the best thing I can do for you now is to uh, relieve you of your misery and let you uh, <laughs> give your fel farewell speech. So I'm gonna model uh, the behavior of not saying anything when you don't have anything to add. So uh, thank you for your service and Thank you, Michael. <laughs> well, I, uh, I asked Mary if I could say a couple words this evening and uh, thought that that would be about it. I said, I think I need about two or three minutes. She said, no problem, no problem. So I come in here and I look up and I have my family here and my friends and, and uh, everybody has said so many nice things. I'm thinking, who are they talking about? <laughs> but anyway, I will um, <clears throat> still attempt to read my small speech, so if you'll bear with me. Um, I'd like to take a couple minutes to talk about my eight years on the Cape Elizabeth School Board since this is my last school board business meeting. I have had the privilege of being elected to serve the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, and it has been my honor to do so. Having grown up in Cape Elizabeth along with my husband and graduated from Cape High School, I now have come full circle. I've tried and I hope I have given back to the Cape Schools as well. The excellent Cape School system is one of the reasons why we wanted our daughter to grow up here. I have worked with four superintendents and a number of school board members, all of whom I've learned from. When it comes to the school staff in Cape Elizabeth, I can truly say that I've never worked with a group of people who are so professional and committed to the education of our students. I am not going to single out anyone as I'm afraid I would forget to mention names. I wish the best to the new superintendent Meredith and the incoming school board and the entire staff. I will miss being involved with the Cape Schools but hope to continue in public service if elected to town council. <laughs> I love Cape Elizabeth and will continue to support this town. Thank you. Put you out of your misery now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kathy. Okay. We will move on now. Um, has anyone noticed that we're having difficulty with the microphones? Yes. Um, is going on and yeah, off. they're going on and off. I don't. I'm not sure that there's anything we can do about that. But um, is Kathy's family? Do you, do you guys want to leave? <laughs> All right. We'll take just one moment. David always seems to be working fine. I'm going to take one minute break. You, you've missed, no, never mind. You missed two shots. She said mine's working fine. We forgot to thank you. Thank I know. Thank you for all the nights. 
Thank you, Mr. Kathy Ray. <laughs> All right, we will continue on um, with the, the spotty microphones. Um, all right, so we will move on now to communications. Meredith, um, let's see, I think we'll start with the merit scholars. Jeff, are you going to speak with us about that? Or did you want to, Meredith? Did well, either of up? us can. I, I have the list here, and I'll invite um, Jeff to add anything. But um, released, let's see, the end of September was our list of national merit um, semi-finalist and commended students, and these students um, are semi-finalists have the opportunity to compete for about 30 million, $34 million worth of merit scholarship awards that will be offered next spring. Um, and Cape Elizabeth had seven students named as semi-finalists. We also had an additional five students who were named as commended students in the competition, which means that they placed among the top 5% of students across the country um, and are recognized for their exceptional academic promise. So I can read those names if you wish, or? Um, sure, why don't okay. we read them? I'm going to do my best, and Jeff, please correct me on my pronunciations. But um, semifinalists were Ethan Danino, Dijon Danino? Danino. Danino. Okay, that's all right. Thank you. John Harrison, Julia Hintlian, Gregory Howard, William McCarthy, Maggie Rabaska, and Charlotte Ruddy. Commended students, Vanessa Blair Glantz, Victoria Brigham, Paul Hamersky, Claire Muscat, and Melissa Stewart. Hamersky. Paul Hamersky. There we go. Paul Hamersky. Thank you. There we go. Okay. Wonderful. Congratulations to our students. And it's a good thing it's not graduation. I know. <laughs> you have time, Meredith. I have time. <laughs> and I was not prepped for that particular list. Um, also released just last week were the lists of AP um, scholars and students of, uh, recognized for AP achievement. So let's see. We had eight students who qualified for the National AP Scholar Award and the AP Scholar with Distinction Award, which means they earned a four or better on the five-point scale on AP exams, and four or higher on eight or more exams, which is a large number of exams. Um, those students are Alexander Diaz, Reed Dowdy, Peter Governale, Lucy Hewitt, Matthew McClavick, John Queenie, Benjamin Richardson, and Brendan Stewart. Matthew McClavick. So, uh, thank you. And as a reminder, Reed and Matthew were our student reps last year. Mm -hmm. um, and Lucy's my daughter. And Lucy. <laughs> throwing it up there. Um, we also had 18 students qualify for the AP Scholar with Distinction Award, um, an additional 10 students who qualified for the AP Scholar with Honor Award, and 19 students who qualified for the AP Scholar Award. And in the interest of time, I'm not going to read sure. all of those lists. And also, they'll be on the web. Mm -hmm terribly mispronouncing more names, but they are posted on our website. There's a press release posted there, and you can also link to it from the high school page. Thank you, Meredith. Sorry we didn't give you fair warning about the names. Okay. Um, and we will do, um, Meredith will give us an AYP update. So last spring, you received from the State Department of Education the preliminary AYP results, um, which indicated that there are a couple of cohort groups in our schools that um, were not making adequate yearly progress. And so the official results came out a couple of weeks ago. And our official results are as follows. Um, Pond Cove Elementary is on monitor status for the 2011-12 school year. Um, and our Students with Disabilities cohort group was the cohort group that did not make adequate yearly progress in both reading and math. And you have to remember that as you think about adequate yearly progress, it has to do with that no child left behind threshold of students gradually increasing performance to reach a level of proficiency of 100% by 2013-2014. So those index scores have been increasing every year. Um, and uh, I looked quickly on the DOE website, but I believe it's something in the neighborhood of two-thirds of main schools are we're not making adequate yearly progress under the standards. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on the exact number, but that was my take. And I'm still understanding RSUs, AOSs, and school districts and their distinctions. So my counts may be a little off. Um, Cape Elizabeth Middle School 
um, made AYP in reading and is on monitor status in math. And um, at Cape Elizabeth Middle School, this cohort group that did not make adequate yearly progress was the economically disadvantaged cohort subgroup. And finally, Cape Elizabeth High School is also on monitor status for the upcoming year um, for both reading and mathematics, and again, for our students with disabilities cohort group. So I'm happy to answer any questions about that, but I would say these were results that we expected based on the information we received in the spring. Okay, any questions, David? Not, not a question, but for the public um, listening, um, the reality is this is an impossible thing to, mat to meet. It's designed um, by uh, an administration that was inevitably, in fact, the better you did, almost more likely you were at some point to hit a ceiling and not meet it. So the fact that CAPE is not meeting it in certain places does not mean we're not having a great education, does not mean that our students aren't learning a lot. In fact, it may even mean if you did your statistics properly, we achieved too much too quickly and we're now hitting our caps by not increasing as fast as we were because by sheer statistical analysis, you can't keep doing that. So when you listen to this, it sounds a little disconcerting. In reality, it's not, and which is why I believe there's a movement afoot to suspend um, No Child Left Behind because it is a ludicrous standard. And I don't want anybody to go away thinking that um, CAPE isn't doing excellent if you want to compare true criteria we're doing, we're among the top in the state in SAT scores and all kinds of things that really are an adequate measure of our progress in how well we're doing, not the standard. I would add, I mean, again, the irony is that, you know, we performed, we were the top high schools in terms of performance on the sta this same standardized test in both reading and mathematics at the high school level this year, and yet we're not making adequate yearly progress. And that does speak to, as the gap you need to close, you have to score more <laughs> points, um, which is much more difficult when the gap is, is smaller. So the closer you get to that target, the harder it is to make the adequate yearly progress standard. Um, the federal government is issuing waivers, has begun a waiver process, and the state of Maine has indicated that it will seek waivers under the No Child Left Behind law. Um, and the other piece of information that is relevant to this is that we expect that the assessment will change in 2013, 2014. So the reality is that schools across the country are not meeting this standard, even the highest performing schools across the country. But I think that you know, as a community, we still take seriously the responsibility to all of our students, including those students with disabilities and the students who may be considered economically disadvantaged. And we certainly want to continue to do our best work in closing the gap for those students. Okay. Any other comments? Yes, Kate. Um, does this, is this equated to money or is there a connection with federal grants and money? Um, as we're only in the monitor status at this stage, there is no uh, tie to federal funds. At some point, there could be a tie in a Title I school once you hit a certain level of years of not making adequate yearly progress. But that in Maine right now is a three to five year period, and No Child Left Behind will not exist in its current form by then, as I understand it. Thank you. And then another question yeah. is, and this is why we're um, focusing on literacy right now to get that. Um, to do what we do well better. Um. And even though that may sound contradictory when we think about our math performance, in part our mathematics performance is impacted by students' ability to write about their mathematical thinking. And as we've analyzed, and I know Steve could speak to this at the middle school level, part of what they looked at um, was students' responses in what they call the constructed response sections, the open response sections where you have to explain how you did your problem solving steps. Students may have had the right mathematical response, mm -hmm. the right number answer, but if they couldn't articulate their thinking and their reasoning, they didn't receive full credit. Well, thank you for focusing on that, to clarify that. Thank you, Meredith. <laughs> um, now on to the superintendent's report. Okay, and I've tried to cross off things that our student representatives along the way have covered. Um, I would like to highlight that the high school did parent conferences for the first time electronically this year and um, to rave reviews, as I've heard, around the community. Um, <laughs> So they hope that will all work out smoothly as conferences approach and um, that that will continue for next year. 
Um, the high school book club recently met and read the book Unwind. He briefed the book Unwind together, so they're moving into the next book. And I knew the title, but I don't recall it, so you might have to stay tuned for a report on that one. Um, Cape Robotics, under the leadership of Evan Thayer at the high school, has been working with the University of Southern Maine um, to move the Southern Maine VEX Robotics Tournament to the USM Gorham campus. And uh, we're pleased to say that USM Gorham has been very receptive to that. So congratulations to Evan. I think it's a great message to students that they can take that work to a university setting um, and really know that the work they're doing is at that level and will put them well on the path to college. So that will happen sometime in December. Our harvest lunch was held in late September, and over 50% of our student body uh, participated in eating the meal that day. And so I want to compliment uh, our Food Service Director, Peter Esposito, on just a great job um, in coordinating that event. And um, thanks to our many parent volunteers who helped out with that as well. But Peter, I would like to say, actually made ricotta cheese for that event. And I am extremely impressed by that because I would never think to do that, but he actually made that as part of the harvest lunch. So nice. nice. It is very nice. I think just a, a nice touch. And students also participated in coordinating that meal. Uh, let's see, we've hit those. Uh, EPS funding, always a popular topic. Um, we received last week some preliminary information about the EPS funding for the next school year. Um, as of last week's report, um, which again is still very preliminary and I will say it continues to be a moving target, but Cape Elizabeth stands to lose approximately $244,000 in state funding for next year, so um, just information we'll need to plan for as we prepare for the budget process. Um, compliments to Pauline Apatria. Um, the audit report was presented at the town council meeting last week, beginning of last week, um, and it was an excellent audit report, clean audit, um, no significant findings or uh, material weaknesses, I believe is the auditor's language. So um, again, compliments to Pauline and her staff who actually pulled the audit together in the second week of July. Am I right about that? So I think the earliest audit on record and still um, extremely impressive results. So we appreciate the good work of the finance office. And finally, I have recently been invited to participate in the PCPA Scarecrow Contest on behalf of the Town Hall. So if there's anyone out there watching who wants to help me out, um, including our student reps who are still here, um, I, I would invite you to contact me. My children and I will be attempting to create some sort of scarecrow for the competition, which um, will be judged at the Harvest Festival the PCPA is sponsoring on October 22nd. One more. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to highlight, you know, as you saw from our student representatives throughout the evening, um, presentation skills are a key part of the work that occurs here in the school district and really supports our work in literacy. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Um, and I would like to add my kudos to Jeff for the um, sign up, um, the, the um, school, um, oh, the words escape me. Um, the what? Electronic sign -up. The electronic sign-up for conferences, yes. And an end to the cattle call of the past when we'd all run into the library signing <laughs> onto sheets. Um, that was, um, it was seamless and what used to take um, 45 minutes I think took me all of 10 minutes for, te for two children. So um, it was, a, it's a beautiful process and thanks for bringing that to the district. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's move on then. If there are no further, are there any questions for Meredith? Um, let's move on to new business. Item A, consideration to approve the proposed World Affairs Council trip to Boston University. Brown University. Brown University, I'm sorry. Um, November 11th through 13th, 2011. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve the Proposed World Affairs Council trip to Brown University on November 13th through 11th. Okay. A second? Okay. okay. Um, any questions, discussion around that trip to Brown? Okay. All right. All those in favor? 
Okay, item number B, consideration to approve a 5210 Let's Go grant application for a stainless steel water fountain to be installed on the upper playground of Pond Cove School. Do I have a motion? I move to approve. Appro uh, we're approving at this point to discuss. I move to approve the 5210 grant for a water fountain. And a second? Second. Okay. All right, discussion? One Any questions? simple question. Um, is this, you know, it's only $1,000. Is this, then we have adequate provision for this in the budget? It's a grant. Uh, doesn't, then why? It's a, it's a grant request, but because it involves the placement of something on school grounds, so in this case, the water fountain, the, according to policy, the board needs to approve it. So it won't cost the district any funding, um, and it has been signed off by our facilities and maintenance department and by building administration. I misread, sorry. It's okay. Um, I had a question, actually, if there are no other questions. Um, Greg, in his um, letter says that it does not kick in a site impact, does not kick in for a site impact study plan. Um, do we need one of those and will that cost extra? In this case, based on the information that we received both from the grant and for the specifications of the installation, that is not required. So okay. We reviewed the town ordinances and requirements for site planning and that is not needed in this case. Okay, I wasn't quite sure what that meant. Okay. And the total cost of installation is covered by that 340? Yes. Okay. Um, I have another question. How many months of the year will we be able to actually use an outdoor water fountain? As long as things are above freezing, we should be able to access the water fountain. But I would think that for best case, <laughs> We might get into November, and we would probably have it shut off until sometime in the spring, until snow's gone. June. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Most of the school year. <laughs> it might be available from June to September. <laughs> I should have asked Kathy this question given her, uh, her knowledge, but uh, I wasn't clear on who's actually making the grant. Um, uh, my understanding, and Mr. Eismeyer can correct me, but my understanding is it was coordinated by the Wellness Committee and led in particular by the school nurse at Ponco, Paula Harris. Okay. Um, and if it's going to be open in the summer months, which I assume it will be on in the summer months, um, will it be serviced and cleaned in the summer months as well? Yep. Yes, it will. Okay. Great. Those are my questions. Anyone else have anything additional? I right. think it's great. I think it's fabulous. Yes. That, and the time that it took um, Paula Harris and the Wellness Committee to write the grant and to um, Greg to go through the work to put it together is huge. And I um, applaud the coordination it takes for everyone to get a grant mm -hmm. to the school board and then approved. Okay, okay all those in favor? Okay. So, yeah. Right, item C, consideration to approve a memorial plaque placement in the newly created Rindy Martin Memorial Garden at Pond Cove. Um, you all received a letter from Nancy Rollis in your packet. So may I have a motion first? Um, I move to approve a memorial plaque placement for the newly I'm sorry, placement in the newly created Wendy Martin Memorial Garden. Okay. Um, a second, please. A second. Kate. Okay. Any discussion around the plaque? I think this is another one of those, um, um, you know, things that we need to um, approve on policy and um, the reason it came to us. That is accurate. Any comments or concerns or questions? No? I just know that uh, 
this teacher is a very beloved teacher in many generations of, um, or not generations, but many community members and families feel very strongly about her dedication mm -hmm. to Cape Elizabeth and are thrilled to do this work um, to set up the garden. So thank you to all the people who set it up and for the coordination again that it took for Meredith to get it in front of Meredith. Yes, thank you, and uh, thanks for mentioning that, Kate. Um, and thanks to all who will maintain the garden as well. Exactly. Um, it's a really nice tribute to a teacher who gave a lot to the children of this town. So. All those in favor? Seven out. All right, consideration to approve the following co-curricular and athletic staff nominations for the 2011-2012 school year. I would suggest we do this in a slate, please. Do I have a motion? Uh, yes, I uh, move for the approval of the following co-curricular and athletic staff nominations for the 2011-2012 school year as listed uh, in the um, agenda. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, any comments, questions? David? Yeah, uh, just not here. Yeah. No, I mean, Thorak. Well, I have several questions. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that the looking at track, we had four coaches last year. It was one of the most heavily attended sporting events we had. Now we're down to two. And I wanted to question, I, simple question, is that adequate staffing? Um, I noticed a variety of Nordic ski, uh, just quickly noticed Nordic ski, diving coach, and alpine ski coach. but. The, Every other one is differentiated between male and female. I assume that those coaches are for both males and females. Yes. Otherwise, we'd violate a law. Uh, but um, so the answer to my second question is yes. That the answer to your second question is this, yes. Okay. We have, we offer those sports for males and females equally. And I, I simply, quite frankly, don't know why we go from four coaches to two coaches in track. Um, and um, I think we had 70 kids last year. It was probably the largest winter sport we had. Um, what I can tell you at this point is these are the names who are at this point prepared for nominations. It doesn't prevent us from, it doesn't preclude us from adding additional staff later should that need arise, but these are the people who are ready to go and to be hired for this okay. position. I, just for, I wish Jeff was here. I, I think you, you are gonna need more than two. There are a lot of kids these meets are very complicated with six, six schools, and I, I, I see at least two people missing, one of whom I know why she's missing. I wish she wasn't, but the other one I don't know why she's missing. So I, I just question it. Again, it's a sport I know something about. If I can just interject, because um, I know that Jeff, the, the, assum the assumption that Jeff is making is not that those positions won't be filled. It's he is making every effort to fill those positions and has had difficulty doing that. It is difficult to find coaches. I, so he is working as hard as he can to fill those slots. Mm -hmm. That's what I need to know. I, he might want to try the, I know this, but I know something about it, but I think we do need more than two people. Meredith, I, I would add that, you know, you only see one position listed at the middle school. It's not because we anticipate that there will only be one position, but at this juncture, those are the only positions that have been fully hired for, that we've been able to find adequate staff for and are satisfied that we've done all of our homework to bring them forward as nominations. Okay. All right, any other comments or questions about this slate? All those in favor? All right, um, consideration to approve the following staff nom nomination for the 2011-2012 school year. Paul Casey for the RTI Executive Functioning Services teacher, grades seven and eight. Um, may I have a motion, please? I move that we uh, approve the following, or uh, Paul Casey as the RTI Executive Functioning Services teacher, grades seven through eight for the 2011-2012 school year. I have a second. Second. All right, Kate. Um, any questions about this or comments? I just had a question. I may, uh, I think a few meetings ago we did, had another RTI request that might have been for the fifth and sixth. 
And is, uh, is it just that this is a new program we're staffing or just a uh, normal coincidence of um, normal departures for, for this area? We had a resignation, as you may recall, at the end of the summer. And so as we moved through the hiring process, we had a half-time person who took a full-time position, which necessitated this opening. Okay. And so in order to have adequate time for posting in the hiring process, we're just now able to bring forward this additional nomination. It's been filled on a substitute basis before now. Thank you. Any, um, all right, David. Um, most of the time when we're asked to approve someone, there's some, and, and I thought there was one, but I can't find it. There is some description of the process by which the person got chosen, their qualifications, something. I, I thought I saw it, but I haven't. But maybe, perhaps you could fill us in. So um, I just can't find it in these papers here. I thought there was something about this person. But it's worthwhile to, again, note for the public that what, we, what is actually done behind the scenes to pick somebody so by the time we get the vote, we can rely on the recommendation of DLT or whomever is recommended with that, that this is person's qualified and a good person to do the job they're being chosen for. So happy to highlight for you the hiring process, which involves following the hiring guidelines that are established um, and reviewed by the board periodically. So we put together a selection committee once the position is posted. Um, the applications are reviewed in this particular case. Interviews were conducted um, under the direction of Mr. Connolly at the middle school and involved um, teachers from those grade levels, um, as well as a guidance counselor, if memory serves. And then um, this nomination was brought forward. So um, to me, <laughs> for my approval, and then I bring the nomination forward to you. Um, this particular individual has worked for us in a part-time capacity most recently, but previously worked for the district for, I believe, 23 years, if I'm not mistaken, as a teacher. Well, I would say that, that I think that's more than adequate process, uh, right people involved. Um, so that satisfies my views, um, my, my, my desire to have background information. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? All those in favor, please. So, uh, all right. Um, we'll move on to item G, consideration and action to authorize the superintendent to execute a tax-exempt lease purchase agreement with MST Government Leasing, LLC, for the purpose of refunding and financing existing lease purchases of photocopier equipment and lease purchasing additional new and reconditioned photocopier equipment in the amount of 200000 or $200,000, cents and at an interest rate of not more than 3.29% per year through August 1st, 2016. That's a mouthful. So moved. <laughs> Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Um, discussion, questions? I, I have one question. Okay. Pauline, it looks like there's savings in here, but it's hard to see just what it is. is there, can you characterize what the savings? I mean, I can see it on a per copy basis, but right. I can't do the math. I don't know how many color and how many. Right. It's total, total yearly savings is about $6,000. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. Pauline, could I get you to come up here just, I'm sorry, just in case somebody's watching and they can't hear. Oh, okay. I could repeat it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. I'm um, the question, do you want to repeat the question quickly, John? Yes, I was just hoping you could characterize the uh, amount of the savings produced by this lease versus the previous lease. Right. The savings will be on the cost per copy for supplies and service. and. For the first year, it amounts to about $6,000 saving. Over the five-year uh, period of the lease and the warranty period, it will be about $30,000. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions while we have Pauline? Just, David? just to state the obvious, Pauline, and, and John's question was my primary one. 
you, that, that's, that is net savings of any refinancing fees or anything like that. In other words, that is the true savings what we'll have per year, not just a per copy basis, but we'll save that amount of money over five years. Correct, over five years, yes. Thank you. I, I, I guess I would also just thank you and point out that, because I think it's interesting, that you worked with um, 10 other school districts and municipalities to, pr to produce a, vo a, a volume that created a competitive, um, a, a, enough volume so that you could get competitive pricing and, and, and f push that cost down. So thank you. We appreciate that. Yes, you're welcome. I think we see a better savings if we go in as a group. Okay. I'm, sure, I'm sure we do, but I also know it takes work to coordinate that, that effort. So th thanks for doing that. Thank you. Thank you, Pauline. Okay. If there are no other questions, um, then all those in favor, please. Samina. Um, and for her final swan song, <laughs> as policy chair. We'd ask the Ray family to come back. <laughs> Kathy? <laughs> That's Take it from here. It's nice and cool in here now. I've noticed <laughs> the heat is gone now. <laughs> um, in your packets, you will find that there is policy, CBI, evaluation of the superintendent. We approved it at first reading on Jul June 14th. Uh, it went back to the policy committee with one small change, which was in section D. Um, David had recognized that instead of the, we, using the word using, we had the word suing. So we made that change. Somehow I sensed that. Yes. So there, besides that, that word change, wordsmithing, there are no additional changes. So it's before you tonight for second reading. So I move that we approve CBI, Evaluation of Superintendent, for second reading. Do I have a second? A second. Um, any questions on that? Okay. All those in favor? All right. Um, item I. Uh, moving on to uh, policy GBEBB, which is a um, policy that we have already in process, um, we had in place already. Um, the policy committee, uh, per request, reviewed this policy, and we have made a couple of small changes. Um, the existing policy, if you go down to the paragraph that starts staff members, um, we have added uh, a couple underlined spots, so I will just read it. It says, staff members are expected to be sensitive to the appearance of impropriety in their conduct and communication with students, including communication that occurs electronically. That is the one sentence that has been changed, so it's before you for first reading this evening. And if there's any questions, uh, yes, David? Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. Oh, that's right. um, I'm not on the policy committee anymore, so this is really the first time I had to take a look at it. Um, the prohibited conduct, the second um, paragraph, singling out a, a particular student or students for personal attention in friendship. Um, again, it may perhaps is wordsmith, but obviously s particular students or students get singled out for personal attention because they need extra help, because they need a variety of things. Uh, and it may, may even be, it, it just the words personal attention I think, um, and it does say beyond, it is qualified, the whole thing's qualified beyond normal student relationship. But again, if some students are not the norm, they may need more personal attention. So I, I mean, it, it just seems a little bit ripe for, a little bit blurry, a little bit blurred, a little bit vague in, in a way that I don't think it's intended. I think the idea, David, was that the personal attention was the emphasis was on personal versus student-teacher attention. So one student may get additional attention from a student, but it's a student-teacher relationship attention versus personal-personal. Um, and, you know, and that's why I think it's qualified by saying beyond the normal student-teacher relationship. So 
Um, if you needed more help than your, your fellow student, that's certainly permissible and is not excluded here. It's just if it was beyond that student-teacher relationship. So it's not about the amount of time or the attention in terms of helping with um, for you know, school work. It's, it's about something beyond school work, personal. I can see that reading. Yeah. Do you have but a suggested uh, change that you'd like to um, look at? I, I could give it to you by your next policy meeting, even not off the top of my head. Okay. I just had a question. I know um, in the age of uh, social media, um, you can you know get information about a person without you know their um, without you sharing anything about yourself. I was just thinking, like, do we have a policy or? Um, guidance to teachers. I was just thinking if a teacher likes someone's Facebook page, for instance, you may not be disclosing anything at all about yourself, but you're learning in personal information about a student. I know it's a, it's a gray area, but I didn't know. Um, that might be something we might want to consider in terms of, um, you know, more direct uh, guidance um, on that sort of because that wouldn't fall under any of this information, and I'm just not sure if, if, if that would be considered appropriate uh, behavior, so. I would say that we talked about that in terms of policy, and I think that you know, we all recognize that social media continues to change and evolve, but what we as an administrative team, and the part of the reason that we in included electronic communication in here is because we wanted to make that specific reference. A lot of our work around what's proper and where these lines are crossed occurs in our training and our work with staff, the, you know, the administrators work with staff at the building level. It really is the guidance that surrounds these policies. It's not just the policy itself. Um, but I think we could say, you know, Facebook, and then it would, they'd be on MySpace. Or we could name any number of particular current social media <laughs> hotspots, and they would change a year from now, two weeks from now. And from a policy perspective, we felt that would be cumbersome to maintain. So we felt that um, identifying electronic communication as, as a source where people needed, or a place where people need, need to be cautious in their communications and thoughtful um, was the way to handle it, and then to allow our building administrators to have the direct conversations with individuals about where those lines could be blurred or crossed. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next one we have is JJIAB, which is Private School Students Access to Public School Co-Curricular, Interscholastic, and Extracurricular Activities. This is a, a sample policy that has been sent to us by MSMA. And um, maybe, Meredith, you want to just give a brief um, synopsis of what you know about this? <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> sure. It's already passing the torch. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I, I will say that this policy was also reviewed by the Maine Interscholastic Athletic Association, um, but that there is a requirement to allow access to students who are attending private school to public school events, similar to the requirement that we allow students who are being homeschooled to access um, events at the public school. So it's our obligation to set criteria that allow us to implement this policy in a way that's in the best interest of students. And that, I would say, is what's included in the detail of the policy. Any other questions? I actually do have language for you. If you want to give it to you now, I'll just. Did I have the suing versus using number? No, I, it's like a four word change. But I can give it to you now. I, I'll hand it to you at the end. I'll hand it to you at the end of the meeting. OK. And that would be good. Great. That would be great. OK. Is that it? Okay. And then the last one is uh, J-R-A-E, which is um, a policy that we have in place. It's actually not a policy. It's, a, um, it's an information, Education Information Rights Act. And um, we are eliminating Section D, which you won't see in your listing now. Um, we currently have Section D, which is student social security numbers. You may remember that in 2009, uh, the Commissioner of Education required local school units to request parents provide student social security numbers to the school. 
then you might remember that the school board decided that we were not going to um, ask for social security numbers and now um, the state has decided that's a good idea as well so we're no longer asking for social security numbers so we need to um, change that um, J-R-A-E so the only change to that is to eliminate the request for student social security numbers so that is also here for first reading David do you have any questions I was asking for actual information on the ground as to how this works and I was satisfied with the response I got from my student representatives. Great. Okay. All right. Um, that's all I any have. Any questions about JRAE? No? Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks. All right. We will move on to committee reports. Um, John, would you like to give us an overview of um, finance? Yes. Um, so the finance committee will be over its the course of its next three meetings, which are um, October, November, and January, we'll be looking um, closely at the sort of the big drivers um, in terms of the, um, the district's budget um, as a means of preparing ourselves in advance of, of the school board's participation in the budget process. Um, and we um, will be looking at um, three uh, quite broad areas uh, in each w one in each of those th those three meetings um, the first on October 25th um, will revolve around the district's um, audit and controls procedures so that's about how do we um, protect the, the spending that we do um, budget how do we ensure that it's being spent the way we expect it to be spent and so forth um, and then in future meetings we will look at um, demographics and long-term planning um, and in a, a third meeting we'll look at um, shared services and pooled resources okay. thank you thank you John um, I wanted to give a quick update on our retreat which we had last Friday um, we spent some time talking about our goals for 2011. We had some short-term goals that we set uh, in the spring, uh, all of which we have achieved at this point, um, including hiring a new superintendent for the district, negotiating a three-year contract with the teachers, and reviewing the budget and um, specifics and communicating it to the public to assure passage. Um, and our final point was, oh, I'm sorry, I just heard a voice, um, was to check in mid-year to evaluate, and that was um, what, what we did last Friday. In addition, we reviewed some other goals that we had agreed to revisit, including um, that we continue working with the DLT on some common goals, and the common goals that we have targeted are partnering with the DLT, um, our district leadership team, to support specific goals around literacy and professional learning um, communities. Uh, in addition, we took a good look at our committees and our committee structure and attempted to pare down some of the committees. Um, and. Uh, we took our standing committees down from four to two. Um, we, have, we now have two standing committees, which are finance and um, teaching and learning. Uh, we found that human resources was developed primarily to write job descriptions. And now that those are complete, that committee can be dissolved. And the standing committee um, on teaching and learning which had been developed to assist with the CMP process. That work is um, almost complete. The, the curriculum is almost complete. Um, and so um, Meredith will set up an annual cycle of review, and the board as a whole will um, participate in that. But in terms of monthly teaching and learning committee meetings, um, and that being a standing committee, we dissolved that committee as well. Um, committee appointments, uh, we dissolved um, the need for an alternative energy committee member from this board. Um, Greg um, participates in the alternative energy committee and um, 
he will report to the board if there are any issues that need our attention. Um, we will continue on um, having committee appointments with the with CIF and having a main school management association delegate um, for that meeting later this month um, and our delegate is David um, this year and last year we'll continue to have a paths um, representative I think that is required by law and we'll have a technologies um, a steering committee representative um, uh, but that plan is complete that's on a three-year cycle so that will be as an ad needed basis on an as needed basis in terms of our advisory committees um, the communications committee which is listed on the web still um, was dissolved actually a year ago uh, the extracurricular committee was developed to address needs around the turf field and um, that's been built and well used and so that can be dissolved um, we will continue having a legislative liaison um, and a representative to the positive action committee sports done right um, is no longer funded um, so that committee um, is dissolved the strategic planning has not met um, in several years um, so that is dissolved the wellness committee um, we have decided um, there's no need for a board advisor at this point, um, but we will try and look at wellness through a strategic plan in the future. And there will be a need, um, we think, in the coming year for a member for the Buildings and Grounds Committee. Um, we have to do an <coughs> overview uh, of Buildings and Grounds next year, so um, we will be um, adding that committee. So we feel that trimming these committees will allow the board to focus on finance and policy and support um, the new superintendent's goals for the district as they become apparent as she gets to know the district and, and we look at mapping out new goals um, in January. So I would say look to the web. All of this will be posted, um, at least the new committee structure. Uh, we also discussed evaluation for the new superintendent in the past we had evaluated on an annual basis the board evaluated the superintendent we will be doing regular intervals and check-ins with the superintendent um, possibly quarterly in executive session um, to make sure that we're on track with our goals um, and um, those are some of the items that we discussed during our retreat Okay, so are there any school board agenda item requests? No? Yeah, that would be great. Um, go ahead, yes. Just a brief announcement that um, the school board makes appointments to the Community Services Advisory Commission so we've been advised by Deb Lane that there are two appointments that the school board will need to make um, for the term that begins um, January 1st, 2012 and runs through December 31st, 2014. So the board will need to make its appointment by the end of December. So I guess just putting the word out that if you're interested in serving on the Community Services Advisory Commission that you should contact a board member or Mary as chair. Okay. Great. Maybe we can put that on the web. Look at that posted today. Yeah, yep. that would be great. Thank you. All right. So that, that's not a member of the board. That's an appointment of the board. Of board Correct. Of a, so it's a me, we're looking member for a citizen. Two. Two citizens that's interested right. in serving on the Community Services Advisory yes, and, Board and on behalf like of the board, the school board. That is accurate. Okay. And if they would like to build a scarecrow, that would be a good, <laughs> good sign that they're community ready to service. serve on the Community <laughs> Service Advisory Commission. Yeah. How about the volunteer to allow you to nail me up as a scarecrow? Please? No, on a serious yeah. note, it is um, the board appoints four members and the town Offer. council appoints we'll three members. So, uh, you know, we definitely appreciate citizens who are willing to volunteer to serve in that role and to work um, with Janet and her yes. staff in developing programs. Okay. Thank you, Meredith. Um, any agenda requests for the future? Okay, upcoming meetings. 
Um, can you just quickly mention the uh, proposed legislative uh, release? Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah. May I? Thank you. Okay, so how am I doing this? I'm, I'm speaking half as a school board member, but also as a state rep right now. So um, we had uh, we had our first um, legislative liaison type group meeting with the school board uh, two weeks ago, and myself and Senator Cynthia Dill and members of the school board and the president and. Going forward, and uh, I'm sorry, Jane, uh, Representative Jane Eberly of South Portland and tiny part of Cape Elizabeth was also present. So going forward, what we're trying to uh, plan will be having monthly meetings with uh, school board members and uh, town, town council members in addition to um, the town administrators, um, Mike McGovern. And am I, am I Getting anybody? I think maybe the town, um, the town council, maybe the Correct. town council chair, town, right. town council chair, or and or members and who are chair. present. So we are really working hard to really have a, a a planned schedule through the year. And so I just wanted to have that on record tonight, and we'll also be posting this on the web too. So if the public is interested. And just hearing what will be on our discussion and our agenda, just look to the web and we'll be working on it. One of the things that we did um, cover was upcoming issues relative to the school board, to school, schools, education funding, EPS, uh, charter schools, issues that will be dealt with um, as part of the carryover bills in the legislative session um, starting in January. So again, just look to the web and we'll try to keep it as as comprehensive as possible. David? Uh, being present at that meeting, um, I'd like to, I think I'd like to clarify a couple things. One, I thought it was the legislative committee of this board is meeting, not the, not the school board as a whole. So you don't, the school board as a whole doesn't need to meet. Secondly, I'm not sure that these are public meetings, nor would we want them to be public meetings. So to the extent that you want to put them on a town website, um, these are different meetings, David. I think these are an effort to have just the um, three representatives of the area in addition to the school board and town council. This isn't, I, I don't think that this is the same as the legislative liaison or not. Like, no. Either that or we just call it something differently, well, similar to what they do in South Portland. We're trying to model the same type of um, method that Jane Everly, Senator. Mm -hmm. Representative Everly does in South Portland, and, and she meets with these groups on a monthly basis, and we think that that's a good idea to do here as well. Okay, well, I, I think we'll need some clarification on that, because that's not quite what I understood, and I understood that the representative schedules are difficult for them to meet multiple times for multiple purposes with essentially the same people, so mm -hmm. I, I did not understand that the same way. Hmm. Well, we will clarify, you know, as a state rep, but I will make sure I will clarify that and get back to you as soon as possible. And we'll post what? it on the web, yes. you know, what we're, what we're doing, whether it's a public meeting or yes. um, Sorry. Yeah. a meeting with the liaison um, and um, just the reps. Yes. But I like the idea of a public meeting as well, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. um, so people are able to ask questions. Okay. All right. Okay, and Kathy, do you happen to remember when the policy meeting is? I don't think I remember. I wrote down November 16th. Thank you. Accurate? Absolutely. Okay. We'll be there, whether it's... Yes, I knew it was the second okay. week in November, but thank you. Okay. I Go don't ahead. have it with Go me, ahead. so... We need some All right. Um, any other meeting announcements? Okay. I guess I'll make a, an announcement, which I forgot to make um, in my finance committee meeting update, which is um, that for that meeting on the 25th, if the board has questions around audits and controls, um, those questions should be submitted to me, and I'll send a reminder about this, but those questions should be submitted to me um, within one week from today, which is next Tuesday night, so that the administrative team has time to, to grapple with those questions in advance of the meeting. So if you have questions you'd like to ask, 
uh, around audits and controls. Please submit those questions to me within one week of tonight. Okay. All right, so um, for the board, that sounds, and correct me if I'm wrong, John, that sounds like a similar process that we used for teaching and learning where people submit questions early on and... Um, Are you trying to paint me into a corner? Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yes, yes. <It's laughs> <an old> PR <laughs> trick. <laughs> the Don't risk you of want to do it that my way? Teaching and Learning Committee, yes. <laughs> the teaching and learning committee, yes. Which is my old committee. <laughs> process would be similar yes, in so. terms of the submission of questions. Right, and then um, we'll do follow-up questions um, by email, it sounds like. Yes, that would be good. yes. It, 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 at the meeting itself, um, you can ask your, the questions you submitted. You can ask a follow-up question, but if you have further follow-up questions, then those would, we would take those up after the meeting so that we okay. can move the agenda forward. It's brilliant. So I, I'm glad you thought of it. So <laughs> we can't ask a question if we don't submit it in advance? No. Interesting process. Okay. It, it'll, it'll, it'll help you do your homework in advance. Okay. All right. Um, if there are no other announcements, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Okay. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. Adjourned. Yay. Yay.